G'day Jaff Adventures, Terry King here, welcome to the channel. I got young Hamish with me here at the moment and we got our master mechanic, Matthew, <laughs> and we're staring ourselves at a ZD30. This particular motor has got an oil leak in it and apparently it's reasonably common on higher kilometer ZD30s. So if you've got an oil leak and you're chasing it and you're not sure where it's coming from, stick around. First things first, you gotta pop off that engine cover. And what are we doing here, Matt, on hooking sensors? Just undoing the, the boost sensor. We've undone the, the fan, because this has got a, a fan on the Aftermarket fan. fan. That's not a uh, Nissan factory no. jobbo. No, so then we'll just under the couple of hose clamps here. We've got four bolts that hold the intercooler on. We'll get that out of the way. So Matt, uh, obviously we talk, we're talking about oil leaks here. What actually is the problem? Where are we digging to? Mate, it's actually the injector seals. Where the injectors go, or the injector lines go into the cylinder head down under here, the actual injectors basically comes up out of the head and then it goes right angles and pokes out through the side of the the actual cylinder head just below the tablet cover gasket line. Yep. And it looks a bit like an overgrown valve stem seal okay. that actually sits in there. Yep. And you know, these things here, what's this one, Hamish? 2006 Six. model. So, um, you know, it's 15 years old and that seal just goes hard. Yeah, right. Lose tension where it's meant to have tension, you know, for, for sealing. Yeah. And it leaks oil. It leaks oil. It's not a major, but as we know, black diesel oil makes a mess. Yes, yes. So while we're there, we'll throw a tablet cover gasket on it. It looks like it's never been off in its life. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll also do glow plug seals as well, which they sit in the tablet cover. So while we got that off, we'll, we'll do the whole lot. I've actually got one of these myself, so I've done the job. It's not a pleasant job. Um, by the end of the day, we'll, we'll have a bit of bark off our knuckles, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's quite doable. Cool. And Hamish, uh, in terms of the amount of oil that it's leaking, what's it drop? About a 50 cent piece? Cut. Yeah, probably a 50 cent piece every couple of days, I would say. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So once again, because I'm holding the camera, um, I'm not getting off. my hands dirty, which is freaking awesome. You will be. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now, what we will do, because we've got to get the, the tablet cover off, there's another one here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we'll undo that one, but we'll leave that hose on because it's further down in there. But what we've got to make sure is when we take that one off, we put a rag in there because that goes straight down on top of the turbo and we don't want to drop anything down there at all. Mm -hmm. So undo that one, undo that one. Then we'll pop that breather line off. And we'll get in there. I'm going to leave those two bolts on the back of the intercooler just because you're swinging off it. Otherwise, we'll be flopping around. Flopping around, yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, just pivot that up over the AC line and move it down the road. No, over that way more, get out of our way. Cool. Okay. This one here's next. Pop that in that turbo line, right? That one there. That's the one. That's it. What's the intercooler got four bolts holding it down, doesn't it? Yeah, mate, just four little eight mil bolts. And then you sit in those rubber mounts. There's nothing rubber special drop. about them. There she is. You need to spend a couple hundred bucks. Okay. The intercooler. They got a problem with leaking. Mm -hmm. Someone's already put heraldite oh, yeah. around the clamp. Yeah. I put an aftermarket one of mine, they're all welded and they're a little bit thicker. Um, These are just a clamp, <coughs> clamp type yeah, affair around right, the it's corner. It's a known problem with them. I actually got one replaced under warranty back when the car was new because it started leaking. Right. No, mate, just, I just bought mine online, just eBay. It was a couple like hundred bucks. Spares box or something yeah, like that. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Mate, they're a dime a dozen. Yeah. And like I say, it's, it's even a little bit bigger, which is to your advantage anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can see someone's, tr they've done a bodgy on it. Can you see what I'm talking about? Here. No, no. Come here. Put the aerodide on it. This? Yep. Yeah. Which is cracked anyway. Top and bottom. It's not a big deal, like I say. Mine's got the third in a cooler on it. But, uh, <laughs> since I put the fully welded one on it, never had an issue. Nice. Yeah. And, but yeah, have a look down the hole, it's in the sunlight. Nice. You know, for a diesel, it's pretty good. It's bloody good clean, yeah. Yeah, your catch can's definitely doing its job. Yeah. Because I've seen these, I've tipped them up 
and the oil's run out of them. Oh shit, right? Yeah, you know, like they, they're sitting like that. Yep. So down in this bottom corner down here, which is the lowest part because there's a little bit of rake to it. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's really good. And that's nice and clean. Yeah. Cool. You're never going to stop all the oil. You know, there's there's a little bit of moisture there, but shit, you know, for a car of this age, that's really good. That's good, yeah. And there's the catch can there, and it looks like it's a yeah, it's a Pro Vent. Pro Vent, yeah. Man and Hummel, that's that's the one you want. It's a good one. And Matt's removes the vacuum lines. Yep. So what they do is um, because these things got an EGR, that actually um, closes off one of the intake runners for when you're under deacceleration. Right. When the EGR is activated, what I've done with mine because my EGR. Blanked off. It's sort of blanked <laughs> off. Um, I've actually put a little ball bearing in in that, and I've, I've even to go one further. I've removed the butterfly right, okay, out of so there, so it's just got two straight runners in. And, and this you've and when you did that, you've actually seen a market decrease in EGTs. Is oh, that huge! Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I did that when I I um, got it remapped. Yeah, yeah. So um, and this one here, this is a, the main butterfly here. All that simply does is when you turn the car off, that activates so it's a smooth shutdown. So oh. it just chokes it from here as well as turning the fuel off. Yeah, right, yeah. So that's, that's all that is. Cool. It's no big deal. And there's some of the oil leak on our uh, tappet cover. The glow plugs go in here. So this is one of the part that we're going to be replacing. Can Hamish start pulling the rocker cover bolts out? Mate, we'll get this out of the way first because then we've got to remove the, the glow plug rail. Yeah. If you want to come and undo these, yep. I'm that, I'm sure that'll save my back. Of course. <laughs> you can feel it starting to get me going. <laughs> I like this. What do we got here? Oh, oh yeah. as soon as I'm a little bit vertically <laughs> challenged, this is my best mate. <laughs> Good call, I like it. Was it this one, Matt? Yeah, mate, that one there. No, 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 have a look. Oh, yeah, got it. Just crack it with that and then you'll get the little ratchet on there. Just watch that AC line. Yeah. That's it. Got the throttle body off. Yep. I just... What are we pulling off now? Just the glow plug rail, mate. Look, I reckon they're obviously not tight because there's nothing to them. Mm -hmm. Then there's four of them and that on the bench. Now, obviously, <sighs> if you were just doing the injector seals, you wouldn't take the rocket cover off, would you? No. 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 Now, these are the seals there. You can actually, I don't know whether you probably can't see it on the camera, but me just flexing the seal, I can see the oil squeezing out the side of it. I can see a puddle of oil just below it. Yep. Yeah. But what we'll do, we need to rag that up, mm -hmm. and then before we undo anything substantial, we'll give it a bit of a blow, mm -hmm. and um, we might even give it a little bit of a clean, because that way then we're not working in crap. What are you pulling off? Just some bracketry? Just this one here, mate, just because it hangs right over. <laughs> when you support it here with one hand, no, support it there with one hand and pull with the, and then with the other hand. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's it. You always keep that straight, otherwise it'll slip off. Okay. There, man. Mate, you just got the throttle body. That's that little butterfly. Yeah. That I was talking about. But it's got a little bit of carbon feel up there with the gum. With the EGR, when you get exhaust gas, so it's re exhaust gas for circulation, obviously, we all know what that stands for. Um, mixes with the little bit of blow by as such, the, the vapor that gets past the catch can. Catch can yeah. They mix together, and that's what you get. Mm. And that's why we put catch cans on. And the 200 series are notorious for gooing up the intakes. You know, for a car of this vintage, you know, I said 2006, I can tell this has never been apart before. Um, to have just that little bit like that, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. And then you put that down on the catch can. Yeah, 100%. Terms of it's basically back. a filter, mate. It, it filters because engines breathe, they've got to breathe, and that's where it comes out of here, into the catch can. That's basically a, a mist of oil. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it basically turns that mist into a, a droplet form. The droplet form drops to the bottom because mm -hmm. it gets caught in a filter, and you drain it out at your service intervals. 
like I, I've got a catch can on mine. I've, I've owned my truck since brand new in 05, and um, I reckon I'd, I'd grab a hundred mil out of the catch can per, at, per service per interval. Service. And yeah, that's seventy five thousand or seventy five hundred. You do? Yeah, yeah, I do mine about seven and a half thousand. Yep. You know, it's the black pussiest oil that you've ever seen, <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. you know, my crankcase is pretty clean. Yep. So it just proves that they do their job. And I pull, I probably pull about 50 mil out of mine every 5,000 kilometers, so yeah, they, they absolutely do do their job. So these are just the glow plug um, seals, which we're going to re be replacing anyway. So they're actually threaded in, are they? Yep. yep. I noticed the thread on the new one. And they just go hard. Yeah. yeah if you feel them, there's a little bit of Bit of tension in them. Yeah, yeah. We've degreased it, but you can see the oil that's been around the outside of it. Yeah. That one there, the seal's even popped up. Yeah, it has. Yeah. The spring's you see popped up. And you can see it's been like that for been a period like of time. Yeah, sure has. And that's why we like to see a well-serviced engine. Ah, look at that, hey. Hey. No sludge. No. Oil's the cheapest thing you'll ever put in a motor car. <laughs> so what would it look like if it wasn't, Matt? Sludge. Absolute sludge. Geez, they're quite a, um, quite a pointy lobe on the old bump stick, you know? <laughs> and what is the blowout? You know, 90% of engines, you have an exhaust cam and an inlet cam. The inlet lobes, that's the exhaust. <laughs> that's the inlet. Yep. That's the exhaust. So there's actually an exhaust and an inlet lobe on per camshaft. Is that because they're four valves per cylinder? No, but most four valves, you have an inlet shaft and exhaust yeah, shaft. Yeah. But the ZD being a unique thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can see they're chain driven from the fuel pump. Yep. And then they're gear driven to drive the other can. Drive the other can. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So what we'll do, these, these are the seals here. You can see, like I say, big overgrown valve stem seal. Yep. They're the ones that we're going to be replacing. But we've got to actually get all these injector lines off to get in there. Mm. So what we'll do is we'll clean up that face yep. and we'll put that rocket cover back on. That way then it's sealed up and there's no chance of us putting any contamination in there. In there, yeah. Um, because as we know, sandy grit and engines aren't friends. Mm. No. Brand new gasket, Hamish? Mm-hmm. Yep, just clean it out and replace the gasket. Just to make sure that we're using genuine parts, we're actually using genuine glue. You like that too? No, mate, you're hey? killing me. Hey, you being a Toyota owner <laughs> probably wouldn't understand. <laughs> Don't need glue on Toyotas, mate, you know that. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Just a little bit of glue on the parting faces. Yeah. yeah, that's it. There's only four of them, eh? Yeah. Yep. All right, Hamish, you want to turn him up the correct way? It shouldn't fall out. That rag is just dangling over your mating surface, that's it. Oh, we like that. That's uh, all right. Other way around, dude. Spin around. <laughs> <laughs> Made that harder than it is. <laughs> <laughs> These are the uh, glow plug seals. I just like to put a little bit of aviation on them. It's non-hardening. It's just on the face between the seal and the... The o-ring, they've got a little o-ring just here. You see where I'm yep. painting. Does it dry up like a silicon or how does No, it it's non-hardening okay. sealant. So you've left the rocker cover bolts loose. Yeah, just, just, so, just, just so I can center the um, glow plug seals. Yeah, makes sense. And then once they're centered as such, we'll nip the tabac cover up and then we'll, we'll nip these up. Tabac cover's down, glow plug seals in. What next, dude? Down in the dungeons <laughs> of the deep. <laughs> see down in here, where you can't even see my hand, is the fuel lines. And we're gonna crack those fuel lines, so we're gonna lay all this harness back. These are the fuel lines on the back of the injector yeah. pump. You're gonna... Yeah, so there's the, we're gonna undo them. Yeah. But the problem is, is you can't get the injector line back enough into the cavity. To get the seal out. To get the seal out. So that's why we've got to make some room. Yeah, right. Make some room. That instead sounds of, like fun. Instead of putting it off, let's get it done. <laughs> 
So at the moment, you're just pulling off harnesses to allow you to actually get to the injector pump, are you? Yeah, mate, just to try and gain myself a little bit of, bit of breathing space, you know? Mm. Is, there is physically no room. So, so what we've done is we've loosened off the injector lines up on the top side. And you gotta take the injector lines off the back of the injector pump. And to do that, there's not a lot of room. So we've removed the dipstick. We've removed the return line, the fuel return line. We've removed some wiring harness, some bracketry on the wiring harness, and uh, some bracketry on the fuel lines themselves. And that is just so that these pipes, these injector pipes can be pulled out of the cylinder head to get to that seal. Can't really film it very well because there's just there's just no room. But I think we can all conclude that it's a not a fun job. <laughs> Mate, um, we've just got the injector lines off, which is probably the hardest bit of the whole job. There's simply no room. I, I might be able to get the torch down in there and just be able to show you. We've had to pull the EGR pipe off. Yeah. And once the EGR pipe's out of the way, you can gain a bit more room, cracked, taking all four injector lines off the pump. The injector support rails have had to be undone. We've undone the injectors lines at the top off the injectors. As I said before, they go in the vertical side of the head here. Yep. So this is this is one of the seals here. And you'll see, I'll just give you a bit of light. That's it there. It's part straight out. So that's them there. So you just gotta hold your tongue right. Now a trap for young players, and this one's done it is there's actually a spring i'll show you this one here like i say it's like an overgrown valve stem seal yeah. and the spring is still actually up on the in, up on the injector. injector so we need to fish that out because yeah. you can see there it's it's come off yeah but they're hard hard as anything and you can see i'll wipe my finger around that oil there's their oil leak yeah that's been coming out through here because that's actually rubber Rubber line, rubber line on the outside yep. as so well as the inside. So that part seals against the head. Correct. And that part seals against the injector. Hundred percent. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Right. There so we, we know we're going to be fixing the problem because we found the problem. Nice. Happy. Happy, Hamish. Happy. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'll get you to hold the seal pick until I actually locate the actual spring. My concern is that. If it's fallen off, we'll just have to lift the tabber cover back off and find it. Yep. Yep. I cannot see it. We'll come back to it. All right. What are we doing here, man? We're putting the new seals in, mate. We had to um, remove the rocker cover yeah. because one of the old springs popped off number two here yeah. and um, it dropped down. So we couldn't fish it out, so we just had to bite the bullet. And Take tabber cover back off. Fair enough. So I just use, it's, it's actually my scraper, I just use the, the handle on it because it's a nice wide surface area just to lever it in. Yeah. And that's it. So they seal externally on the rubber outside, internally like a valve stem seal. Valve stem seal. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all it is. And that's the hole that's they look it's... like without the seal. Pop that up out of the way and up and in. And then just push him in. You just put just a little bit of oil on them just to make them slide and then I'll lever it in. And That's him. And this was the reason that we had to undo the injector lines because they had to be pulled out of here to clear these seals to allow that seal to get pulled out. That's Sam. All right, ready for a tap and cover. Yeah, we'll just put a little bit of glue back on our parting face. Yep, a bit of that. Might get a bit of that missing glue. Ah. Oh, on tear shelf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Terry would go up there to use that. Throw it out. No, he's like, geez, I wish I ate. <laughs> <laughs> That on the 200 and the 200 would be a different car. <laughs> It'd just sing. <laughs> oh, he wouldn't know what anyway. <laughs> so what Matt's doing at the moment is just putting the injector line brackets back on. We got all of the injector lines on. It's 
a 19 mil on the bottom and a 17 mil on the top. Got the glow plug rail back on and we won't start anything assembling on this top side until we finish everything down there with the injectors. We just need to work on my patience. <laughs> are they um, 10 mil bolts, are they? Yeah, which are about a foot long. Yeah. Well, I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you have to turn them about a sixteenth of a yeah. time. Thank God for ratchet spanners. Okay, one down, two to go. Well, it's about 20 minutes later, I'd say. Maybe 30 minutes later. Yep. And where are we at, mate? <laughs> Putting our last injector line bracket on. That just shows you how difficult it is to get these in. You need to be an absolute contortionist. Yep. It's not easy. The only thing that'll get you there is perseverance. And patience. Patience, yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling in that area. <laughs> and a bit of luck. Luck helps too. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta hold your tongue right. Oh, I can see it. I can see what you're doing <laughs> from here. <laughs> what do you reckon, Amish? Oh, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon you would have walked away by now? <laughs> yep. We're still stepping forward. We've had a couple of times we've had to put the thinking cap on. A mm, couple of times where we had to walk away. Yep, reevaluate. And it's not difficult, it's not rocket science, it's just putting a bracket in, but it's just the fact that There's you no room. And no room. Just putting the throttle body back on. Hamish has just cleaned up the surface for the EGR pipe. And um, just putting a bit of the old Permatex on. And why do you prefer the Permatex over a silicone on the intake side? Mate, this is the non hardening. Permatex, the old aviation yep. glue, and I don't like using silicon products on air intakes or oil systems, especially oil systems, mm. because all it takes is one little bit of silicon, once it dries to break off, go into the system. I have seen it lock up many of oil galleries over the years, and um, the last thing you want is something like this, that it gets stuck on the valve seat and the valve tries to come home. And, Piston chases a valve home and it's all over. It's all over. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of the old Permatex or the aviation glue. Yeah, yeah. We got all our injector fuel lines on. We got all our injector clamps on. Matt's just putting down the last of the wiring harness clamps. Yep, we're getting closer. Getting closer. <laughs> oh, easy. Something shot off, didn't it? Oh, it might have been. Uh, actually, was, I think it was that grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. You just watch your gauges and your lights, and um, like I say, probably won't fire because there's no fuel in the lines. It'll just just keep winding it until I tell you to stop winding it. Okay. Yeah, just close it like you normally would. Okay, right, on, mate. Wind it over. All good. Yeah, wind it. Amount of daylight in here, Righto. so it'll just be all up the side of the block from the sump all the way up as far as you can see. Yep, just where it's all oily. And then yeah, we'll... I can see where it's oily. Yeah, what are you doing, Hamish? Uh, just spraying down the engine, getting rid of all the oil with the greaser. The answer, Ted's just being an ass. I'm not being, being an ass, I was uh, trying to set it up for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting the oil off Hamish so that if we haven't fixed the leak, you're going to see that there's a problem. See, that's the, that's the thing though, right? Because you never know when Terry's like having a dig or if he's asking a serious question. Well, Hamish, you got a beer in your hand, mate. Yes. What do you reckon? Good, I'm, <laughs> I'm very grateful for this, for the help of these blokes, that's for sure. And, you know, let's, let's be honest here. It was all Matt. He's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was Is holding that the... why my arms are cut? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was holding the camera and he's, he's done it before, so yeah. mate. Thank you, yeah. Matt. Yeah, for Pleasure. sure. Thank you Pleasure so much. much. Pleasure. It's yeah. the least I can do. Mm -hmm. It's what we do. It's what we do. And yeah. um, that way then, Terry won't be on your case about putting oil. drips of oil on his driveway. <laughs> okay? That's finally, what it's all about, I'll isn't find, it? Yep. <laughs> so what do you got to do from this point, Hamish? Uh, um, I have to go and get 
a new intercooler because we found there was a crack in there that someone had bodged up. Yep. Um, so I just need to get a replacement one of those and fit that. But I should be able to do that myself at some later date. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Jaffa Adventures signing off. Keep the shiny side up. We'll see you next time. Bye now. <laughs>